Well, hello there, my dear children of the apocalypse. How are we doing today? Welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to the CL13A Mark V. Today's video and videos uploaded in the month of December, and there will be quite a few, are going to be sponsored proudly by free Golden Eagles for War Thunder. Well, I gotta do that again. <clears throat> free Golden Eagles for War Thunder. Download the app in the description below. <laughs> As I was saying, three years ago, I did a December video marathon. Now, back in the day, I had a lot of time and I had a lot of footage, and I was playing the game actively, so it was a everyday video kind of marathon. But I've decided that um, there's going to be about two videos uploaded every single week. Hopefully, I can get as much of this content out before Christmas hits, and obviously, you guys also get to get a reward for that. So the free Golden Eagle app is available in the video description and on top of the comment section. If you use the code shown on the screen right now, you're going to be getting some extra extra goal to start with, and um, after you've downloaded the app, you have these little tasks you have to do, install apps, or do certain actions, spend a certain amount of time in an app, and that will be unlocking a certain amount of free Golden Eagles for your War Thunder experience. To go back to the CL-13, this plane is a... it's a mammoth. It really is, because it's ancient. Well, it's not as ancient as I am, but at the same time, neither is the game. The CL-13 was interesting when it was first added because it was one of those planes that was it was pushing the envelope. It was going that one little extra bit further than the current existing top-tier jets did. Back in the day, we had the F-2 and we had the MiG-15 bis. So there was no Hunter, there was no MiG-17. The CL-13 was added, it was sort of stretching it. Now, when I think of the CL-13, there's a couple of things that sort of instantly springs to mind. Uh, besides having flown hundreds of sorties and... Uh, remembering these early days of uh, of clans um, that we used to have, or squadrons, um, that were sort of dominating, you know, and flying with them and seeing some of the best jet pilots sort of trying to learn from them. It was uh, it was a very, very good time for War Thunder back then. Uh, but the one thing that springs to mind was a, a video made by a by a content creator called Max TV. I'm going to try to find it and link in the description. Um, it was a great argument about why the SEAL-13 is a bit problematic. And he had a lot to do with the mixture of the fact that it was flying with the wrong nation. And because of its top speed, which when it was added was the best top speed of any play in the game, uh, combined with its performance, it was a bit, it had a bit of an edge over the other planes. Now, what do I mean when I say it's flying on the wrong side? Obviously, in its current state of the game, War Thunder, for whatever reason, favors mixed matchmaker. Obviously, how it used to be, specifically the map of Korea, you would have access versus allies. On the allies side, you would have America, Britain, and Japan, and on the Axis side, you have Germany, and you'd have Russia. Now, Germany, during the time where the CL-13 and the German MiG-15 bis are based in, was split into two halves. This is, you know, the Cold War, the time after World War II. Germany is split into two different sub-countries, essentially. Even Berlin, as you know, the Berlin Wall was separating the East from the West. So, whilst it makes sense for the MiG-15 bis to have been fighting alongside of the Axis, the Russians, uh, because it was part of East Germany, it didn't make sense for the CL-13, which was part of West Germany, to be fighting also with the Axis. Now, I'm personally not a history buff, and I, this was something that didn't really bother me, but it was... It was a counter-argument that I think was very well fit, and that was that if they added the CL-13 to the Allies, then it would truly be purely MiG versus purely Sabre. And because the MiG and the Sabre were sort of, you know, like night and day, there were this, this continuously shammering combat scenario that we tried to balance. And, you know, there were patches where the MiG-15 was superior, and there were patches where the F-2 was superior. It also depended on... Uh, what the players were flying that time, how the guns were performing. The CL-13, I feel, added a countermeasure for that because suddenly the Sabre had to fight a Sabre. And the Sabre that the F-2 would have to fight was a little bit faster, but also had a little bit less powerful guns. And on the topic of guns, that's our first kill, and then a... Yeah, that's a kill still. I'm not going not gonna to try to excuse that one. I wanted to give him a bit of a spray, maybe hoping for an assist. Sometimes it happens, sometimes even I can be a bit of a dirty player. 
So having talked all about this historical accuracy, inaccuracy, it's weird now because I'm fighting against the MiG-19 PT, which is the Russian MiG-19. Behind me is an F-100, which is fighting the German MiG-19S. And, you know, times have changed drastically, but I guess what it boiled down to was the question, does my CL-13, with the skills that I obtained back in the day, still match up against the current state of the player base? And the answer is, well, in the most part, it does. Now, against the MiG-19, there's, you know, a couple of disadvantages. Mainly, its its power is just ridiculous, and my acceleration will not match that. But I feel like one of the advantages that I do have in this particular circumstance, or this particular match, is that the SEAL-13, as with most Sabres, is a very nimble plane. And because you have a lot of guns and a lot of ammunition, you can sort of afford to spray just a little bit. You know, your aim has that extra bit of added sort of protection. On a MiG, you don't have that luxury of being able to spare ammunition. Now, why that MiG turned, why he gave me his his broadside, I don't know, but I took the crit and now it's back on the chase. And you can see the difference. The difference in his acceleration and my acceleration is night and day. And now, as I say in most of my jet videos, there's a huge emphasis on having an understanding of where you are in the match, what you're doing and where the enemy is. So I'm constantly checking my six, even if there's a, some some laggy chemtrail left behind, even if it's just, you know, a friendly. I'm trying to check my six regardless of what's going on because the last thing I want to do is, you know, find myself in a situation where I'm in a one versus two and I've got low energy state because it's an instant back to the hangar and uh, rinse and repeat. And in matches like these, because I've been playing less, I've started to actually concentrate and you play in a different way. You're playing a more conservative level game, you're playing to stay alive until the very last minutes of the match, and you're playing to carry. So here we go, we're in a 1 versus 2 with two MiG-19s, one of them has superior altitude and the other one has just, well, been found with its pants off. Um, unfortunately for me, a lot of sparks there, lots of hits, and I have to instantly start thinking about the other MiG because I know he's going to be engaging me within the next 5 seconds. And try to go for one more shot, air brakes are off, I have to, there we go, immediately react. The reason why this was such a good scenario was because in the process of engaging the first MiG, I've made him disengage, and that gives me a perfect 101 against this fella. And that's, that's now one very dangerous player out of the match. So re-engage the first MiG-19, and this is where I realized that this was actually the MiG-19 that I critted earlier. So head-ons, I'd rather not, not against a player that seemingly has a dead engine. Instead, pull the plane up, get myself that energy, convert it into altitude, and then re-engage. At this point, I'm 100% certain there's no way I can screw this up. Obviously, never say never, but that one would have been a bit embarrassing. So, we're down to 200 rounds of ammunition, we're just over 2 minutes of fuel, and we're right next to our airfield with no enemies in sight, which is perfect. You know, the worst thing is if I was stuck over the enemy airfield now, and then I would have to use the two minutes of fuel to kind of make it back to base. If I saw somebody engage me, I'd be like, do I go for a head-on with those, you know, barely any ammunition left? No. So land, rearm, repair, take back off, and then, again, assess the situation which we have on the battlefield. So here we go. I fast-forward the video a little bit just to save you some effort of uh, me trying to re-engage. And I don't know what happened there, but the MiG-21 ripped his wings off. I'm assuming full elevator pull at high speeds. That leaves only the Goliath in front of us, and he's already being engaged by another MiG-19. So we are sort of racing now. This is... I guess this is like playing War Thunder, but being in a state of need for speed, where... You know, we know this guy is going to get shot down because there's no way he can go against that MiG and me and another MiG that's going to be closing in uh, in a bit. The question is just whose kill is it going to be or is he going to crash in the process? And really, this is one of those exhilarating moments because I know that this is the last person that I have availability of shooting down. There goes the MiG. Um, and that means I can get an ace, you know. Choosing between having four kills and having five kills, I'm going to go for the five kills every single time. Thank you very much. So I'm closing in on the MiG, and I'm trying to read his moves here. I'm trying to get him in that low energy state, and I don't know what exactly he was doing here. And then he bails out, and we're like, well, well, there goes my ace match, right? That's really unfortunate, and I was really looking forward to actually having this video uploaded to YouTube and having a great, great experience. And I don't know why, but I activated the blind order. The the MiG that was engaging has crashed. The other MiG is doing God knows what. 
and then I spot this fella, another CL-13 who's just taken off from the airfield. And I thought, wow, I mean, I've just been thrown a bone. I've just been thrown a huge bone because we're about to go 1v1 with the plane we're flying. This is the dream. I mean, back in the day of AeroB, this was... This is the shit, guys. Like, this what this is what gets my heart going. I, you know, if, if I could have this type of engagement at 5 a.m. in the morning, I'd have no problems waking up at 4.30 and getting a workout session in. This is the type of duel that I live for. This is the reason why War Thunder is still somewhat cortex on the back of my mind, because these little engagements... Now, we were both pushing it here, but the real advantage from my perspective came from the understanding that the Sabre turns a little bit better when it goes faster. So, being able to go into that down loop was an upper hand, whereas he was going upwards and he was sort of losing that momentum. There's a skill in understanding how duels work, how 1v1s um, are performed, and understanding that your plane doesn't turn best at all speeds. And it doesn't matter if your flaps are fully extended or not. What matters is, at what speed does your plane have its tightest circle? And a plane like the Sabre has a very tight circle when it goes relatively high speed. So the lower your speed is, um, you're going to be having a hard time. We're not talking about compression speeds here, but we are talking about speeds, say, between six and 800 kilometers per hour. So using that knowledge, I was able to outturn them. Um, even though we're obviously flying the same plane. That's the art of dueling, and one of the brilliant advantages that you can get if, you know, you practice it a little bit on and off. So there we have it, an ace game, a beautiful footage, I think, to learn something from, to take something from, and for me, it was enjoyable to, uh, to have that experience, even though, obviously, it's one in a million in the current state of War Thunder. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio.